Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here on Technique Tuesday and I'm so happy to be with you. I hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day. It was kind of rainy for us, but I think the sunshine is going to be coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> At least they say that it is. So by the end of the week, maybe we'll get up into the 80s, right, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, totally awesome. So this week I've been working on the latte baby coat. And I changed directions because you know how I like to test yarn. Well, I got this wonderful superwash merino that um, I was testing, and I have exactly two skeins. So this latte coat by Lisa Kemery was the project that I was working on, but I could not do the hood because I didn't have quite enough yarn. So here's my little guy right here, and I'm gonna be lining my little jacket. And you can see it right there, all finished. So I wanted to go over this project with you. And if you look at it, we have a bunch of buttons. And if you open up one of the buttons, you can see on the back here, that it has these little backer buttons. And what that does is it kind of stabilizes your uh, button band so that you have, let me turn it so I can get the button back on, so that you have a sturdier button band and it doesn't get sloppy looking on you. And so that's totally uh, fantastic. I love using backer buttons for my projects. And you can see how it just kind of stabilizes everything. It keeps it looking nice and neat. So I, I had a great time with this project. The yarn is wonderful. I am so happy. Sometimes I try yarn and um, I don't like it much. Or there's something about it that causes problems like maybe splitting or maybe pilling or oh, there's any number of reasons that I may not choose to work with the yarn. Um, but this was a delightful pleasure. And it was great for this project. I would, in the future, I'm going to be choosing a different yarn for the project. Because this coat has this basket weave, and it has a lot of garter stitch, using a, a very, very soft yarn that's very pliable and kind of droopy is not the best choice for this pattern. What is a good choice is a yarn that is nicely plied. For instance, Sueno. And I've chosen all these different colorways, Jim. So if you can um, just kind of slowly um, scan over these. I just I chose some colorways that I'd really, really like. Now, you'll notice on the pattern, it is knit with a thicker yarn. But you can knit it with a thinner yarn. You just have to, like on mine, I chose the um, next size up. It was like a 12-month size to get my newborn size because this was a light worsted weight yarn. And so I, I kind of like uh, jackets and things for babies that are not too stiff and not too bulky. So um, sizing up and using choosing a larger size pattern and using a little bit thinner yarn can give you a cute little coat that is um, not too stiff for a baby to wear. Because you know, yeah, sure. I'm so that people too. are coming online. Hello so, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Jim and I had a nice quiet weekend and um, we were able to take out our motorcycles and ride our motorcycles a little bit. It was really fun. So, Here's the back of our little sweater. Isn't that cute? And who's that going to so be for? So cute. This is for little Claire Bear. <laughs> She, she has a lot of little things. She's a tiny little tot. She's just now starting to fit in the newborn sizes. When we, um, Lauren and I, we had her at home in the beginning when she was newborn. She was so tiny, the newborn items were huge on her. And of course, all the stores were closed because we were in lockdown, right? So we we're fighting every day to find something that we could put on her that she wouldn't wiggle right out of. So anyway, this jacket is really cute. And I, I chose this lining and stupid me. Okay. This is really, really cute lining. There's one little flaw with it. And the flaw is that it's 100% cotton. I needed something that had stretch in it. So, of course, I have to go back to the fabric store and get something. I'm hoping to get something similar to this in a stretchier fabric so I can line the little jacket. And what are you going to use for this? 
What's that going to turn into? Well, I would. I thought it was kind of cute, and it would sure make some cute masks. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've been in a mask kick and making so many masks, I was thinking, you know what, I'll just keep it and use it for masks because it is kind of cute. I like it. So anyways, it won't go to waste. I will use it for masks. Um, so back to our thing. So we need to show everyone the little choices. Do you see we carry buttons at Alpaca Direct and I wanted to show you some cute little buttons and little things that you could use for this wonderful baby latte coat by Lisa Kemery. And by the way, if you like doing baby stuff and you want to do a little uh, jacket with this basket weave pattern, it is so cute and it's for sale on Alpaca Direct. So you can get it there. Um, but I was thinking it would be really nice in the worsted weight so I know because this would give the garter stitch some structure to it. Because the hardest part with this whole pattern to get it to look really good is dealing with the edges on the garter stitch. Because the edges can flare out really easily and it seems like no matter what you do, it likes to want to flare where the garter stitch is. So what I did is for the garter stitch section, I went down two needle sizes. And then another trick that I used is the last pearl row right before I did the Icelandic bind off. Why don't you show them? I did a knit five, knit two together. So I actually decreased some stitches before I did my, one second, I'm gonna unbutton this. I was thinking that I'd put the buttons in further too, but I couldn't figure out how to make a button uh, band on the actual, um, basket weave pattern so I left it but do you see this garter stitch right here it looks really good right now but I had to do it a couple times to get that garter stitch to not look funky and um, wavy and what have you um, the only thing on these buttonholes too were not quite as structured as I would have liked them it was a little hard hard to find the buttonholes and I'm thinking that as baby wears it um, it'll become easier to find those buttonholes, but it sure turned out cute. And then, like I said, using this really nice little, the backer buttons on the back really helped to add structure to it and make it super, super cute. So I, I really like this. Also, I did the, remember how I told you guys before I did the knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one? This is the knit one, slip one edges. And if you look up here on the top along here, right here from here to here is the knit one, slip one. And it mimics the Icelandic bind off. It looked really good with it. Much better than actual garter stitch that was in, written in the pattern. I like that. Um, the only thing is when I'm going along here, do you see right here, you can see your decreases for your arm. She did, she had you knit to the last three stitches um, on the back of the sleeve here. So you had two knit stitches in the center and then you had your decreases on the edge. Do you see how we have a decrease here, a decrease here, and two knit stitches in the center? I would have went ahead and put my decreases, next time I knit this, I'm gonna put my decreases right in the center so that those decreases are not visible to your eye when you're actually looking at them. I wanna just roll them under just a little bit more so that they um, are invisible when you're looking at it. And the Icelandic bind off in here with the garter stitch turned out great. It turned out really, really cute. So yeah, I really, really like this pattern. A couple of things that I did, there was another thing that I wanted to show you too. On here, on this edge, do you see how my sweater wants to fold right there? That is because there's a faux seam that I put in here. And I'll show you how to do it. When you do a faux seam, you wanna take, when you, you start at the underarm, before you start knitting your arms, your sleeves, you wanna do this. Um, before you um, do your sleeves. And then what you would do is just let the stitches drop all the way down to where the garter stitch is, but not into the garter stitch, because if you drop the stitches down here, you're gonna make that uh, edge look funny. You don't want that to so happen. So why do you do a faux seam? What, you, what f the faux seam does for you is it adds structure. You know how we all have on the sides of our clothes, we have seams on both sides of our clothes. And that, um, add structure to the actual um, shirt or sweater or whatever it is and makes it look better. So if you have a top down, you know, I love doing top down sweaters all the time. It's wonderful. But just being able to do a little tiny bit, add a little structure on the side so that you get the beauty of an actual seam without actually 
doing a scene. <laughs> it's an awesome thing. Also, I've had people ask me, why do I change patterns? And I wanted to talk about that today. And it's not because it's easier to change the pattern. It's because I like to bring my little whatever I'm working to the next level. How can I make it better? How can I make it look just a little nicer? Maybe um, garter stitch, I love garter stitch. I think a little garter stitch goes a long way. For me, tons of garter stitch on a sweater is, um, well, it's not, it, may, it dresses it down, I think. Um, it doesn't dress it up always. Um, there are some exceptions to that rule, but sometimes garter stitch can make it seem um, a little more uh, not as fancy. So anyway, so that's why you'll see me change things. If I can make things a little bit better or look a little nicer, or maybe it's easier to do. <laughs> or maybe I can do it all in one piece instead of doing a bunch of pieces where I have to seam together. I can do it all in one piece. So that's why I like to change things. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this um, hey, project. So, yes? Can you ask them a question about the yarn? Because maybe you're really evaluating that. See, would they be willing to, would they want to buy something like that? Yes, this is a yarn that, um, let me just uh, butt my sweater again. Th this is a merino superwash yarn. And, of course, it's um, from Peru, and um, the factory that we've been dealing with there has been wonderful with us. Uh, they're great to work with, and they have a quality. They seem to have a lot of really nice products. So I'm very excited to be able to um, use products from their factory. And let me just button this up. This is a lot of buttons on here, but the buttons are what make it cute. So cute, and you can use from three to five, however many buttons you want to put on your sweater, you can change it. And so this is what it looks like when it's blocked. Do you see how beautiful it is? It has a bit of a halo to it, um, but it is just gorgeous. And even though um, they call it superwash, mean, meaning you can put it in the washing machine, I'd like to comment that I heard, um, saw online. Um, she said it is superwash machine, it's uh, machine washable, but if you want your your little projects to last longer to hand wash them because <laughs> they last longer if you hand wash them. So even though I have a lot of wool items that are made out of superwash yarn, I do prefer to hand wash them because I put a lot of work and energy into making these things. So I want them to last as long as I can what make was, them what last. What was unique about this yarn? Because you were so excited about it. Well, um, I love, can you guys see the vibrant color of it? It's beautiful very vibrant color to it and um, it, it, it doesn't split. Let me see if I can show you a piece of the actual yarn if I have it in here. There's not too much yet left. I used most of it. But it, can you see on the yarn is it doesn't split. You can work it over and over and it works just fine. And it's a floor ply yarn. So it, to me, it's plied just enough to give it some sturdiness and still maintain the softness of it. And with no splitting at all, it was a pleasure to work with. Really, really. And it feels so soft. So the, the difference between this yarn and some other yarns is that you could put this next to a baby skin and they're not itchy. It's the, you get the beauty of wool without having the itch of wool. And I love that. I totally love that. So, yeah, I'm delighted with this yarn. I, I think it's a great uh, product, and we, we'll be bringing some in. <laughs> and I will be knitting more items with it because I really enjoy it. So it's totally awesome. So let's take a look at the faux seam real quick, Jim. Oh, do you want to show the rest of these? Because I forgot to show them. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, wait, before we get too excited... I forgot one thing. So for last week, we had heritage prints, and we were voting on the this um, kind of patriotic colorway and then the Seattle colorway. And I think the Seattle colorway won, Independence right? Independence in Seattle. Yes, Independence in Seattle. Northern and these are heritage prints, and they're by Cascade Yarn Company. And it's a very economically priced, um, what they call a sock yarn that is spray dyed. And you can see what the colorways will look like when they get knit up. And um, this is like the Seahawks colorway and um, patriotic. 
and it is a great sock yarn at a great price that makes it makes cute little sweaters or sock monkeys you can do a lot of you can do uh, shawls with it all different kinds of things but it is uh, not itchy and it is a uh, super nice yarn so I do like that yarn. And then for this week, I was thinking, I wanted to get, for those of you who haven't, who haven't tried Sueno Worsted in the tonal colorways, this blue color is called um, Summer Skies Tonal, and this other one is called Lavender Field Tonal. So the Lavender Field is a purple colorway, and the Blue Skies, of course, is blue. So you guys help me choose which color we should give for this next week. And the way that you guys enter to win for our weekly prize is to put comments in the comment section. Maybe you tell us what you're knitting or working on. I love looking at what projects you're working on because it gives me ideas for Technique Tuesdays and it gives me pro ideas for projects that I would like to work on. And don't forget to tell us where you're from and then that is also very fun. And if you share the like and how, how else can you share with your buddies, Jim? Just hit the share button. Yes, you hit the share button and then we can have all learn and grow together. So don't forget to let it vote on this so what we can, again? Uh, one is Blue Skies Tonal and the other one is Lavender Fields Tonal. And so I, this, I want this for the prize for next week and it's a superwash merino wool by um, uh, Haiku or Skissel uh, Yarn so, Company, and it is That was really, in one of your knit clubs too, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it's a super, I like this yarn. It's a very nice yarn. So um, anyway, so Jim, if you can go over these, I'll briefly talk mm -hmm. about these different yarns. These are little um, kits that I would use for my latte um, coat by Lisa Kemery. Now, some of them are different weights, so you would have to adjust your size. Maybe you choose one size up when you're using a lighter weight because she used a chunky weight yarn but I found that these little tiny baby sweaters the babies if you make it too bulky or too stiff um, the babies don't want to wear it so this is a DK weight and this was a really cute colorway and this one is called ballet slipper it's one of our more popular colors and you can see that we have buttons to match it and then um, the Sueno Worsted here, and this is Reflecting Pool Tonal. And I thought these cute, cute um, buttons would be darling with that. So um, another DK weight. And this is a very popular color. It's called Shifting Sands. And this is the DK weight, and this is a worsted weight. And I thought these buttons were really cute. And we carry these at Alpaca Direct, too. It's hard to find good buttons right now. They're, you can't find them anywhere. Um, so, and we do have an order for another large, we're restocking all of our buttons. So if you guys can't find buttons or are having a hard time, then go ahead and take a look because we have a few. We only have these three buttons in this blue color, but I thought it went really well with this Dos Tiras, which is a lighter weight um, yarn that you might be able to make a latte jacket. What I love about this Matisse blue is that is so vibrant and it's an alpaca wool blend and it would give some structure to the jacket it would be just fine now on these uh regular sueno uh worsted regular sueno and worsted sueno and the this is called the lavender field which is the prize one of the prizes that we might give for this next week and then i thought you know, it would be really cute to make one out of Kenzie. This is a worsted weight yarn, and I love this color blue for baby, and I like the flex in it. It's kind of a tweed. And then these little abalone shell buttons. Wouldn't What's that be Kenzie darling? Of? What's that made of? Um, Kenzie is a mixed yarn. It's made of 50% New Zealand wool, 10% Angora, 25% nylon, 10 alpaca, and 5 silk. And um, it is a super nice yarn. This yarn is not, um, it's a little itchier than, and so is this um, Dos Tiras. They're not quite as soft as the Sueno. Um, so lining these two yarns, um, lining these two sweaters would be good for baby so that you um, don't have anything next to their skin that's stiff. Um, also, I thought maybe for a summer weight latte jacket, what about Kabasi Plus? It's machine washable, and these are cute little buttons by La Petite um, that we have, and um, it is gunmetal gray, and with this um, Kabasi Plus or the Kabasi DK, it's 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 21% elastic, and 8% silk. 
and this would make a really nice uh, sturdy um, uh, darling structured little coat um, and it would be more uh, something that you could wear in the, when it's a little warmer too and it comes in both Kabasi Plus and Kabasi DK weight, so if you wanted a lighter weight one. I also thought this regular Sueno in DK weight with these little metal buttons, I thought this one would be cute for a little boy. The one thing I wanted to point out on this latte baby jacket, um, where you put your buttons for boys and girls are opposite each other. So you'll see if you look in the pattern, um, the on on this jacket if you lay this one here they have put it over the top this was for a little boy this is for a little girl so you see how they lay differently so make sure when you're making the pattern that you keep that in mind that for um it goes the buttons it the placket lays over one side for a boy and the other side for a girl okay um now let's take a look well, at our a question what, what sure. is kabasi plus uh, Kabasi Plus is, it's a really hardy worsted weight yarn. And um, that, mind you, the jacket does um, call for a chunky weight yarn, but just size up. She's got a ton of sizes all the way to 10 years old. So um, you can make it out of a lighter weight version and be totally fine with that. Matter of fact, I would recommend it because if you get really bulky weight yarn and you, and you knit it at a tighter gauge, you are going to have an unhappy baby, a, hap a baby that doesn't want to wear what you've made <laughs> because it'll be too stiff. And you know how little babies like to have their arms free so they can move. And if you make it too stiff or where they can't, their arms don't go to their sides, then they're not as happy. Right, Jim? Mm -hmm. So we got to make our babies happy. So let's take a look and take a look at this faux seam. Now, I've made a couple little swatch, a little swatch here, and I wanted to show you a couple things on here. So you'll see that I have laddered this stitch all the way down to the bottom here, and I put a little stitch marker on here. See, so what are you doing here? You're making a this book. is um, how to make a seam like I have in my sweater. See? See how mine folds really easily? It has a natural fold in it, and I didn't do that. That's actually doing this pattern that I'm going to show you, and it's super easy to do. So you would do it underneath the arm before you start your sleeve. You would let that one stitch in the very center stitch. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is when you're doing decreases on either side, you want to make sure you don't want to ladder down the stitch that had the decreases in it because if you mess up your decreases and or increases that would be bad so in the this pattern she has two knit stitches so you could just leave one knit stitch there instead of two and um, bring those decreases around to the back and still have the knit stitch to be able to put in the faux seam. So I put a little stitch marker here, a locking stitch marker, so I wouldn't lose my last little stitch. You'll see that I did not let it ladder down into my garter stitch because it will make your garter stitch look bad. So don't do that. And then I when I'm doing these different techniques, I'm using both hands and I figured that God gave me 10 fingers, so I might as well use as many that, as I can. So I have, I'm gonna grab two of the ladders and bring it through. And it, you might have to wiggle a little bit to get them through. And then you bring one of the ladders and bring it through. And then you go back to two of the ladders and bring it through. Make sure when you're grabbing your ladders that you're grabbing them in the order that they were knit. If you get it out of order, it will make your project not look as good. We do not want things to be out of order. So then one, so you're going back and forth between grabbing two ladders and then one ladder. And you just do that all the way up and it's super simple to do. And I'll show you. And I did this in the middle of the swatch just so that I could show you. But uh, I have some other things I was going to show you. If you didn't want to make a faux seam doing it this way, I was looking to see if there were some other ideas that I had. And um, that might be easy for you to do. If you're afraid of dropping your stitch down 
and not being able to get it back on the needle. Some people are a little afraid of doing that. I take anything apart because I'm like, well, if it gets ruined and I have to start over, then I've learned what not to do. <laughs> right, Jim? <Yep. laughs> I, I've been known. I remember one time I, I forgot what I was knitting. I was knitting something. And um, I, I don't know how many times I knit it. And um, I, and uh, Jim, didn't you go out of the room or something like that? And then he came back in and he's like, where's your project? And it's like, I ripped it out. And he said, that was the third time you did it. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, but I learned what not to do. So it's all good. So this right here, this right here is my fake seam. And if you look at it, watch how it just wants to lay flat. So that's an easy, and here's the back of it right here. That's your fake seam and it just wants to turn and lay down there so nice so if you're making sweaters for yourself and you want to make a fake seam you should try this technique because it's pretty cool now right here I did this little tiny swatch where I was doing on the front side I would knit across and then on the back side when I came to this stitch I would just slip it purl wise so it's knit every other row so what it does is it it does give you a little bit of a fold um, and it is almost a design element because it makes that knit stitch more prominent shall I say so this is something else that you could do so on the front side you would knit all the way across and then on the back side you just slip it with the yarn in front you slip it pearl wise with the yarn in front. Now from here to here was just regular knitting. And you can see how there's no, no fold and it doesn't want to do anything. And then I thought, what about if we just tried a pearl stitch? So I did pearl stitches right here. Instead of knitting all the way across, I did a pearl stitch. That didn't do anything. It didn't do anything at all. I wasn't sure what it would do but I didn't find it appealing. <laughs> so anyways, so now I'm going to knit across here. And I, if you look on my edges, on these edges right here and up here, that's a knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. So I'm going to knit to where this edge is and I'll show you what I mean about that. What is it you're showing me? It gives you an edge that you can use in place of garter stitch. And um, in, in the pattern, if, can, can you reach the, the pattern picture, Jim? Mm -hmm. in, the, in this pattern, well, you can't really see it, but on, if you see the, where's, let me look and see if there's a version. I have tons of notes in here. I was trying all kinds of stuff. Ah. Here's, here's a picture of her one without um, the hood. And if you look along here, it's all garter stitch in the front. And it's garter stitch up here in the top. And the problem with a bunch of garter stitch like that on the edges is you get an unstructured sloppy top. Unless you knit on a very, very small needle. And even then, I can tell you that it, it, it easily looks sloppy. And so to avoid the sloppiness, here's what I did. On, I did four stitches across, but for this sample, I did just two. And it's go, it goes knit a stitch and then slip one with the yarn in front. You always do that. Knit a stitch, slip one with the yarn in front. And as long as you have multiples of two, you can make the band as wide as you want it but all you do is you knit one and slip one and then let me show you what let me just put this back so I can show you what the finished edge looks like this is sample yarn that I'm trying right here and it's not my favorite yarn so but I think it's just fine for doing samples so on the edge this is my knit one slip one and you see 
that it has a very rounded, almost like an I-cord edge. And it almost feels as if there's air trapped in there. It's, it's really, really nice. And what it does, if you look right here, it gives you a finished edge all the way around that looks nice next to the garter stitch and looks nice next to the basket weave and adds a little structure to the edge. So that one's the knit one, slip one with yarn in front. So on this sweater, now you know the, oh, 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 I wanted to show you one more thing. Here is our... You got one more trick up your sleeve? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if I was going to do buttons with uh, the backer on it, I will just go to the back and bring my working yarn through. And I'm doing this in a different color of yarn so that you can see. And then I would bring it around and put that button on there and have it straight as you can get it. And then I would look under here and just look and see where that last half stitch was and bring it through like that. Then, now it's time for me to add that backer button. Okay? So you can add the backer button. And then I would just go right in where that other stitch was right there. And you need to have it come right back out here and you want to when you're doing putting your buttons on you don't want it to be too tight so now I have it started and you can go ahead and have your button on the front your normal button and your back air button on the back and you will have a finished product that is very sturdy. You can see how sturdy it is. It makes your placket sturdy so this is not sloppy. And then when you go to button it on, it maintains its structure and it looks good. See how nice that looks? So if you haven't tried um, putting backer buttons on the back of your buttons, I would highly recommend it. I have done it so many times. Oh, and here's some samples. You can buy backer buttons anywhere. And um, these are just, they buy, you get them in bigger quantities and you can get them from this size all the way down to little tiny ones. The only thing you have to keep in mind when you're putting on your backer buttons is if your darning needle won't fit through the buttonhole, then you can't use it as a backer button. So that's the only thing to think about. Your darning needles need to fit through the button. <laughs> and I, I didn't really even think about that too much until I was um, going ahead and working on it. And then I found that. So Jim wanted me to remind you guys that this last month was our blueberry crossbody bag project. Right. And this was for our knit club and it was totally fun. We got to try our hand at doing a felted bag. And it was really fun. And this is made out of ultra alpaca yarn. It totally sold out. We don't even have any left in the yarn. And this is made out of ultra alpaca. And we learned how to do a lateral braid. We learned how to do an I-cord. We learned how to pick up stitches um, both horizontally and vertically. And we also had our treat for um, the knit club was um, little stitch markers um, that Mary Ellen Davis made for us. She's one of our knit club members. So we try to help out our knit club members when we can. And these were so darling. We saw those and, well, we just thought they were awesome. So they're anyway. All, they're all handmade. Yes, they were handmade. And so anyway, so for all of you out there that are interested in doing the, the knit club, every month I try to instruct, um, give you instructions on ideas about things you're going to learn. And we do videos all along the way to help you out. Plus, we have the VIP group where everyone is talking with each other and helping each other out. So it's a totally awesome experience for everyone. So don't forget the knit club if you're interested in that sort of thing. And then um, 
This latte baby coat is by Lisa Kemery and it's on Apaca Direct. And doing little baby coats, you can learn all kinds of things, whether it's using backer buttons or using faux seams to make the top down sweaters look better. Um, it's a great, great little project to learn a lot of things. And don't forget, all of you guys, to vote on our Sueno uh, worsted tonal in the. Um, this one is called Summer Skies Tonal and then Lavender Fields Tonal. And we will get this for the prize for next week. And let's see if we have our winner for this week. It was the Heritage Prince and it's Seattle Skies. And let's see who we have here. Where is it? I know it's here somewhere. Okay. I didn't see it on here, Jim. Who's the winner? It's on the back side. Oh. I didn't see it, darling. The prize for last week, the winner, oh, Diana overall. Yay! Congratulations, you won some heritage prints. And all you have to do is get in touch with us and give us your address and we can send it out in the mail to you. I hope you enjoyed this yarn. It is fun. I've used it to make sock monkeys and shawls and all kinds of things. So heritage prints, awesome. Diana, congratulations, that's awesome. And this next week, I will be working on the Calidez vest and we'll be figuring out for those of you who have never done sweaters, this vest project is totally fantastic for beginning uh, sweater makers. And don't forget, take a look at the latte coat. You can learn all kinds of skills from this. And whether you're, you're putting in your faux seam or your backer buttons, um, or just learning how to do the basket weave, it is a great little project. So I hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy a little warmer weather, and we'll be back with you next Tuesday.